Hello everybody, welcome along to this video, which is Mr. Johnson Teaches Macbeth, Act 3, Scene 4. An absolutely pivotal scene in the play, a real turning point and a really important scene for you to know, so well done for being the person who's watching this video. Um, a reminder, this is part of a series of videos I've put together where I go through every single act and scene in the play and just summarise it and break it down for you as part of your revision so you can feel better in knowing that you know those scenes that little bit better. A reminder that this is GCSE English Literature and it's Paper 1, Section A that we're talking about here, the first exam that you sit. So without further ado, let's move on in. In summary of this scene then, Macbeth is hosting a banquet for the other thanes. Everybody who's everybody, who's anybody I should say, is gathered there and they're having this massive supper in order to sort of recognise and remember Duncan who's been murdered. He's given the news, Macbeth is, about Banquo's murder, so he's been successful in having Banquo murdered, but Fleance, who he also wanted to die, has escaped. Fleance is Banquo's son, remember. Macbeth sees the ghost of Banquo uh, arrive at the banquet and he's absolutely terrified, but no one else can see it, so it makes him look really weak and also just crazy. And he then decides that he's going to visit the witches again because they'll be able to help him. Key characters in this scene then. So we've got Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. The ghost of Banquo appears as well. One of the murderers comes in at one point, but otherwise in the background and sort of with individual lines here and there, loads of the other thanes, Ross, Lennox are there. And there's lots of servants, but also lords and ladies, very important people from Scotland. It's a really quite a big, big grand scene. And Macbeth makes a right scene at it. So let's go through it then. There's a lot to get through in this one. So Act 4, Scene 1, we're a hall in the palace there and we've got all the people come in. Macbeth says, you know your own degree. So basically, you know your own rank. Sit down according to how important you are and where they sat would have been dictated by that. Macbeth then goes on to say uh, some very nice things. We're going to mingle. We're going to go around having a chat, sort of playing the humble host. We're going to sort of look after you and be really nice to you. Um, and they do that. And then he sees one of the murderers come in the distance, so he goes off, has a chat with the murderer. The first arrow at the top there. My lord, his throat is cut, says the murderer. So, okay, yep, Banquo is definitely dead. Uh, Macbeth is happy with this, and he goes on to say, you know, you're the best sort of person if you uh, if Fleance is dead as well. But then he gets the news, Fleance escaped. And then he gets really angry. Beneath that arrow, he goes, "My here comes my fit again, like my anger again. Um, and then he goes on, but I am now cabined, cribbed, confined. You've got these really hard sounds in this alliteration of that C sound. Cabin, cribbed, confined. These are all sort of things that mean to be trapped. Trapped into, as he goes there, doubts and fears. So like now, I can't be happy because Fleance has escaped. But he does ask again, is Banquo safe? Uh, safe in a ditch, says the murderer basically with 20 gashes on his heads. So yeah, he's absolutely dead. Macbeth says, thanks for that. There, the serpent, the grown serpent lies. So the snake references to a snake again. If you watch any of my other videos and remember the idea of a snake being untrustworthy, the worm that's fled, he means fleance there. And on my first arrow, fleance is uh, compared to a worm that's going to be poisonous in time. But for now, things are OK. He says no teeth for the present. So nothing that's going to hurt them for now. Off goes the murderer. Macbeth calls him over. Um, you know, come and give cheer. Come and make everyone happy again. Come over. So he does. Uh, oh, over he comes. In comes my first arrow there. The ghost of Banquo appears. Macbeth doesn't notice it yet because the ghost goes and sits in his chair while Macbeth is still wandering around. Second arrow down then. Macbeth is saying, like, if only Banquo were present here. Um, I see Banquo isn't here. I hope he's okay, basically. And uh, Ross says, basically, it's his, his own fault. He needs to be here. Come and sit down, sir. Third arrow down. Macbeth says, the table's full. Here's a place reserved, sir. Where? Here, my good lord. What is it that moves your highness? Moves as in he's reacted to it. Macbeth has now seen the ghost. He's pulling, a, if you can imagine the actor who's got to pull amazing faces, like completely shocked, horrified faces. And he yells out, which of you has done this? What, my good lord? And then he shouts aloud, and I've put it in pink as a good quote to write down and have for the play. Thou canst not say I did it. Never shake thy gory locks at me, he shouts at the ghost. Never shake your blood-covered hair at me, you horrible spirit, you horrible ghost. Especially thou canst not say I did it, which is true to talking to the ghost. He didn't kill Banquo, but he had him killed. The, everyone else reacts, sir, the, the, his highness is not well. Lady Macbeth has to take control here, second arrow down, reassuring the others he's had these fits for years. He's always been like this. Just pay no attention to him. You'll extend his passion, it says. That will make him worse. 
And then she says, which I've highlighted in yellow, are you a man? Which again is sort of remembering like the earlier scenes where she sort of questioned his masculinity. It's one of those again. And he goes, I and a bold one, like really brave one that dare look on that which might appall the devil. He's so sort of horrified by this vision of his murdered best friend she goes on there to tell him that there's nothing there she says this is the very painting of your fear which isn't a painting isn't real it's the air-drawn dagger which you said led you to duncan which is really interesting it's the only other reference we really hear to the fact that macbeth has told her what he saw because he saw the air-drawn dagger on his own in act two scene one Basically, she goes on to say, I love line 65, this is a woman's story at a winter's fire, authorised by her grandmum. This is just like a a made-up story. You're being silly. This ghost, ghosts are not real. Shame itself, she says. Why do you make such faces? When all's done, you look on but a stool. You're just looking at a stool, you fool. Pretty, see there, behold, he says at the very top there. Um, And then he gets really upset because he says, if the dead are being sent back, then our grave shall be the stomachs of birds like regurgitating birds cough up their food for their young ones to eat so it's almost like the dead are being coughed up by their graves again Uh, it's a really horrible image banquo's ghost disappears for a minute she again look at that yellow line unmanned in folly so you've been unmanned by this silly behavior um and then he goes on i've summarized it on that bottom arrow there there was a time where the dead stayed dead and now they are rising coming for us is what he's saying there and that is basically showing the disruption to nature by killing the king, he has disrupted the natural order of how things should have been. And by disrupting the natural order, things are now all unsettled, which is why he fears that the ghosts are coming out of their graves, because he's killed Duncan and he's causing these other things to happen now as well. My worthy lord, my friends do lack you. He goes on to say on the first arrow, please pay no attention to everything. I have a strange illness and those who know me know it's not strange. It's something I've had since I was a boy. Sit down, have a drink, everything's fine. Notice the ghost of Banquo re-enters near the bottom there, and then we get that second arrow, and he calls out, Avaunt, and quit my sight, let the earth hide thee. Thy bones are marrowless, thy blood is cold. Basically, he's absolutely terrified by this ghost again. The ghost is just staring at him at this point. Some um, productions have the ghost like pointing at Macbeth, almost accusing him of, you killed me. Um... Lady Macbeth again at the top there is trying to take control. Think of this good peers as a thing but custom. It's something he always does. Um, He is shouting out, Macbeth shouts out things about Russian bears, armed rhinoceroses, tigers. Basically, he is saying he's not afraid of something he can fight, but he's really terrified of things which he cannot fight. And he can't fight a ghost. So, oh yeah, he's absolutely terrified. And he shouts, hence which means go away, hence horrible shadow, unreal mockery, hence, which is go away, there goes the ghost of Banquo, he disappears, and he goes, being gone, I am a man again. He's absolutely fine, the ghost is gone, play everybody, sit still, stop standing up. Lady Macbeth at the top says, says, you've displaced the mirth, you've got rid of the happiness and the joy, you've broke the good meeting with much admired disorder, like you've ruined everything with all these shoutings. Um, he sort of says like a summer's cloud, you know, things come and go. You know, and Macbeth says there, it's like you should have been able to see the ghost as well. Why didn't you see the ghost? Lady Macbeth clears everybody out of this point. She gets rid of them all at the bottom of the page there. Off they go. And then he and her are left together. And this is another key quote for him. It will have blood. They say blood will have blood, which I've labelled there. Macbeth worries that their acts of violence are leading to more violence, which will eventually lead to their own destruction. By killing, they've caused a chain of new chain of events to happen, which ultimately they think will result in their killing. Essentially, don't write things like this in your exam, but what goes around comes around. And by starting off with killing, eventually that killing is going to come back around to them. Um, And then Macbeth goes on here, but he says... Um, the first arrow there, he's going to go to the witches. He goes, I will to the weird sisters, more shall they speak, for now I am bent to know by the worst means the worst. So even if it means hearing bad news, I need to go and hear it. I need to go and see in the witches. The bit in pink there, I think, is an absolutely fabulous quote, which I've got an explanation coming up here. I am in blood stepped so far, think about stepping in blood, that should I wade no more, returning were as tedious as going o'er. And I've translated it there. I am so deep in blood that trying to go back now or stop now is harder than going on. I've gone so far, I might as well keep going, is what he said, which is a terrible thing to say. Yet in his head, it makes sense. I may as well just keep going now because I've gone so far in blood. 
And that last arrow I've labelled there, he's starting to act impulsively, which means he's not thinking before he does stuff. He's just starting to do things as they come to him. Before now, he's been very cautious and calm and plans things before he does them, whereas now he's being impulsive. He's going to do whatever he wants to do. And that's why he says, uh, I have in head, or strange things I have in my head, that will to hand, that I will just do. Hand means something you do something with. And then basically off they go. Key themes in this scene, the supernatural with the ghost, but also the violence which has caused the ghost to appear. That idea of blood and the idea of guilt come through in this scene, um, which I'll talk about more in a moment. Some quick revision questions. Pause this slide. Have a go at answering those questions. Write down your answers somewhere. It's the best way of doing this. And then you can see whether you know them. If you don't know them, go back through the video and find the answers because it's really important you understand what you're looking at and hearing. If you aren't, then your revision isn't really working as well as it could. So pause this slide and have a go at those now. And then the final thing I want to dwell on is the idea of the ghost and guilt. We've talked earlier in other scenes about blood on hands representing guilt, and that's a theme and blood on hands comes up in different points in the play. This is the only time we see a ghost, but that ghost absolutely is a representation, a symbol of Macbeth's guilt. It's come back to haunt him. No one else can see it. So it's almost like the deeds that he's done have come back. And as I mentioned earlier, ghosts are supernatural. And because he's upset the natural order of things by killing the king, Banquo's ghost is part of that. And it's he's come back because the ghost can't rest until he has uh, sort of completed his time on Earth. And his time was cut short by Macbeth. So he's come back temporarily to haunt him. And that's where I'm going to end this video. I'm going to say thank you if you've made it to this point and watched it all the way through. Very well done. You're going to benefit from it when it comes to your exams. A key scene, they could absolutely choose part of this as part of a question, so definitely a good one to know and revise. Make sure you've got quotes written down somewhere. And above all, give everything your best shot when it comes to exams and revising. I thank you for watching this video all the way through. Check out my other videos for the scene summaries. Thanks very much and goodbye.